Hey, happy Monday, happy spring, and I cannot wait to share my message I have for you today. Um, this goes along with a comment that I made last week, and we talk more about how important it is to have an identity outside of your kids. And I'm gonna stretch, stretch that even outside of your relationships. Have an identity that's just yours. So listen in. Hey, welcome to Her Restored Fear Podcast. My name is Tammy and I'm your host. And today we're going to dive into a comment. So I, I, I talked last week, the slow the spring sprint, and I talked about having an identity outside of your kids. And I got a lot of messages and DMs and emails about that being like, one is heck yes. Two is I don't like, doesn't that doesn't that seem selfish to you to have it out? You know, why do you need an identity? Your your kids become your identity. And I have a problem with that. And so today's episode, I just wanted to talk about that for a few moments. Um, let me put my focus on so I don't get dings because it's the time of day for dings. And um, also glasses. I'm getting older. These are a new, going to be more of a new um, staple. I have my my ones that I have to start wearing all the time are coming in. Um, but hey, until then, if these help me see better, then I will wear them. Plus, they're purple. They're cute. I like them. Back to the stories at hand. I want you to, for a moment, think about when you were graduating high school or graduating college, those late teens early 20s and you had you were really stepping into who you who you were you were realizing your your desires you had your dreams you had the vision you you know what you were good at you um you wanted friends who wanted something similar you really you embraced like if you wanted something you went for it right like you had these dreams and you had motherhood was part of that so let me tell you a little bit about my journey with that and realizing and this is why I feel it's so important that you have an identity outside of motherhood. I love, love, love being a mom. I love my kids even more when they're asleep, even as teenagers, they're right now sleeping and they are little delightful beings. Um, when they're awake, they're a little bit more moody but I love being a mom. I went, I all through high school, I wanted good grades. I was, I wanted, when it came to softball, I wanted to be the best pitcher. So I would practice and I would practice. And I got that, I, I got that title. I helped my team get um, the UK championship. So as a sophomore, we won the United Kingdom championship in softball and Next year, I broke my broke my hand and had to say goodbye to um, pitching. It never was the same, but I poured myself into tennis and I loved it and I went for it because if there's something and it wasn't even that I want to be better than other people, I wanted to see what I was capable of. I wanted to see what I could do and, you know, what what was possible for me. I, I loved pushing that way. I see now how that's maybe not the healthiest, but it's what I knew. It's what I did. My parents didn't have to push me. I joined the Air Force and I was an officer and I loved, I I had a drive to, to, to do more, to, um, to learn. I loved learning. Um, as an, as an officer, you do a lot of paperwork, but I would still go down to my guys and they were, you know, maintenance guys, um, calm maintenance. And so they would work on like air traffic control towers, radios, satellite, the phone switch, the, um, you know, radios, all the things. Right. So I would go and I would just ask them questions about how things worked because I wanted to be able to know what they were doing so I could lead them better. And I, it really spoke to my heart because I was able to help them be better as well. I was able to take care of them. I was able to lead them. And um, and I learned a lot about leadership through it. 
And fast forward, I, you know, D and I decided it was time to start trying to have a baby. And we got pregnant. We were very fortunate to get pregnant really fast. And I was so excited about, about having a baby and push fast forward. Um, my plan was to stay in the air force for a, a couple of more years. Um, I knew I was going to get out D and I, we didn't, we knew that the dual military with our jobs was going to be extremely tough just because he only had like three bases that he could go to. Um, Com is on every base, but I had a special designation. So I only had certain bases I could go. They didn't overlap very, very much. I think one overlapped. Anyway, I decided that um, push comes to shove, something happened. Um, you know, God has mysterious ways of working. And after he was six months old, I got out of the Air Force. And I was so excited about being a full-time mom. I thought I was going to be good at it. I thought that I was just going to fall in, you know, in line, like fall in love with motherhood. And it didn't quite go that way. I absolutely loved my son, but I did suffer from some postpartum depression. I got, I was really overtired and all those things. And I went from, I went from leading people to going home to this baby that didn't really, well, like it was hard. Like I, I gave, I fed him, changed him and tried to get him to sleep and he still wasn't happy. And I, I felt like it was just the same thing every day, same thing every day. And as much as I loved being a mom, um, I was really thankful when I found other mom friends to hang out with because it's a really lonely time. It is, it's a really tough time, especially when nursing did not happen like with him. And that was when it was beat into you. Best is breast or breast is best. Breast is best. Like if you give your child formula, it means you don't love your child. And it's like, and so I had that in the already that drive of, well, I'm going to rock this. Like I'm going to do it. If I want something, I go for it. And Isaac had a different way of looking at things. He was a lazy eater and would like, he would prefer that it just fell into his mouth instead of actually working for it. Doesn't work with nursing. So I, so right there, like it was, I felt defeated. Fast forward, I, I started, you know, I was like, what, what do I want to do? Because I, as much as I love my kids and at this time, you know, I had to, I needed something for me. I love being a mom. I loved my children. I love my children. I love being a mom. But there was something within me that needed an identity, that I needed to do something, and it's something more than just a hobby. I do what a lot of military wives do, is I joined an MLM, and I, um, and yeah, I multi-level marketing, and it's kind of like, you know, like the Mary Kay and Avon things, which I'm not going to say the company that I signed up with, but I, I did love it. Um, I didn't make any money. Um, I, but I loved because it fed my desire to teach and to be with people and it was creative and I loved it. Um, and then after my husband's accident, when I lost my husband, again, that identity shift, like I needed something for me. And I want you to think like, not, don't feel sorry for me. This is not the point of it. It's the, the idea that throughout your life, how did you define yourself? And the women who I work with all are searching that they all have that driven, they are ambitious and they, they love family and see how important it is. But many of them have gone numb to who they are there. They woke up to who, you know, their, their kids, they need them to be there 24 seven. They, and as toddlers, we, we kind of do need to be there 24 seven. If they're napping, then, you know, we have maybe an hour and a half that's ours. But as time went and, and that's why I, I went and I went in to get my master's in marriage family therapy, because I, I, there's something more that I wanted. I wanted to help people. I wanted to serve. I wanted to 
I wanted to grow. I wanted to figure out things for myself too. And so I did that. And I became a therapist and loved that. And it was nice because it, I could work while they're at school. And then when I got home, I could set it down and didn't have to. So I had that piece and I only worked two days a week, but I had that piece that was mine that allowed me to explore what I liked and what I wanted and drive and purpose for what God has been showing me. Fast forward and I shifted into coaching, which fits me even more than therapy. And I really get to step in to who God created me to be. And let me tell you one of the added benefits. The more I stepped into who I was called to be, the more my kids thought I was cool. They're, they're still saying, you know, oh, you, I forgot you used to do cool things, mom. Oh, I forgot that you used to be pretty cool. Oh, I forgot you used to do hard things like, you know, going to Iraq. Well, yeah, I was. I was cool, darn it. But being able to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not at your beck and call all the time. And with them being homeschooled, they feel they they feel like I should. And I was in that where if you're trying to make someone happy all the time, you are miserable because you know what? You are not responsible for making someone else happy. They're responsible for that. And typically, they especially kids, they don't really know what will make them happy. They just do things and keep doing it and keep doing it. And then when you tell them no, they get very unhappy. When you tell them, put your phones down or no electronics, sorry, electronics goes off at 8.30, they get unhappy. And then you feel terrible because you're making them unhappy. Happiness is not your goal as a parent. It's not. Your goal as a parent is to help them become who they are called to be. Step into the characteristics that God has given them. Happiness is not a characteristic. Even if you can say someone is happy, like happy-go-lucky, that is not a character trait. That is an emotion. That is the way they deal with things. And the more I, well, the more I look at what my desires are, which let's face it, my desires align with what my family values are. So it's not one or the other. It's a, it's an and thing. It's an and thing. And so having an identity and being able to say, you know what, sorry, I'm going out tonight. Um, or yeah, like come up with something to eat because I'm, I'm going to go and have dinner with a friend or Kyle and I are going to go on a date night. There's chicken nuggets in the, in the freezer or whatever, but having an identity outside of them, they've stopped saying that they don't want to be adults anymore because what do you know? All of a sudden I'm stepping into something that's fun. I'm a lot nicer. I'm a lot more balanced. I'm intentionally balanced because I pour into myself. When I, when I am full, I am able to serve a lot easier. When I know who I am and can say yes or no, um, or maybe, you know, like when I am set on my boundaries, on my, um, what my goals are, what my vision is for our family, and I act towards that, and I know what my part of that is, then the whole family can start to, to rise to that as well. By being able to have an identity outside of motherhood, when it gets to the point where they are teenagers and don't want you around all the time, it doesn't hurt as much. Then you can see it as a freedom and as a privilege, as an upgrade, this midlife upgrade that we get when now we can use our time in the way we want. We have more resources that we can use towards developing us. It's, it is so important that you know who you are. By understanding who you are. You're able to, you're, you can be funnier, you can laugh more, you can rest because you know what's important and what's not to you. You can do the things that you need to do, but you also know where to say no. Because if you know and you have this intense need to please and you say yes to everything, 
that is not, that is not what's serving to you. And that's also taking resources that are your family's resources that was not yours to give away. It was not yours to give to outside to serve someone when your family needed that. The only way to see those boundaries and to know that is to know yourself, know how God created you, know your purpose, have an identity, have dreams and visions. And they say, you know, people without vision perish. Um, I'm, we're in the middle of a, a journaling challenge right now. And um, it's a challenge, but it's easy. I, I need, to, need to find a different word for it. Um, but it's one of the things, it's one question every day for 30 days. It's, it's easy. It's simple. We do it. We're um, right now there's about 35 people, I think, doing, doing this. And we're all working together all on different days because they've started um, different. But the idea of slowing down and really understanding yourself is key to understanding why you're stressed. What's pulling at you? What's nagging? What is this deep feeling of whether it's a warning or whether it's a push through or whether it's a, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to refine you. So go through this trial. If you, you have more understanding, you have more peace if you know who you are. So that is what I want to talk about today is why having a identity outside of everything else you have going on, having something that's yours, you it is a, a true gift to be able to lay down your desires to, to go into motherhood. There is a point you, it serves you better to pick them back up. I want my kids to see that if you work for something, you can, you can get it. It may not look what you like, what you expected, because, you know, God does work. He, you know, but he works in mysterious ways. He, his plans go first, but if you don't act, it does, you don't start that process. Well, kids these days, if I was sitting and serving my kids all the time, and that's another podcast I'll talk about is, um, why I stopped serving my kids so much. And, um, because I wanted them to have a servant's heart. And that's by serving them. You would think that that would give them a servant's heart because you're modeling. I had good intentions, but I was actually turning them very selfish. And to the point where they were treating me like I was more of a servant for them versus a gift of service that I was offering to them, which again, I won't go into that because that'll be a, a whole nother podcast. But all of these things, if we're intentional about what we want and what we do and who we are, our whole world will start to start start to shift and look through this lenses of peace. So friend, start to discover and start with looking back before kids, before you're married, before when it was just you and God. And if God wasn't there yet, then it, still like he was there. He just, you didn't acknowledge him. So look at that. And what were your dreams? What were your ambitions? What did you want? What did you, what did you, and if you wanted to have a family, like I did, I wanted to have a family. So that's definitely part of my, my dream. But what did you want for yourself? And write it down, start to explore that. And what skills have you picked up along the way that lead you more towards the dream that you had way back then? And with that, I will, I will close this because I, I think I gave you a lot to think about. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this matter. And I know that some of you are adamantly against what I'm saying, because you told me, and that's okay. Because you know what, we have the freedom and we have the freedom to choose. And when your kids are out of the house, and you don't know who you are, how does that feel? If you spend your whole life doing everything for your child and everything for your teenager, and you don't have any part of you, you're numb to yourself. How is that going to be when you are, when they're launching? We are supposed to launch them. That is the natural path. That is how God intended. 
They're not meant to be 30 years old and living in your basement. If you want a healthy adult child, start with a healthy adult you. Model that. All right, it's not too late to join the journal challenge. You can go on the website, um, go on my Facebook group, and it's there all over. The, um, the videos, and um, you can get the emails and all of that. And join us there. I am also, so those of you who are doing the journal challenge, um, I believe I said May 1st, I have it on my calendar. Um, so this has been such a good experience that I am going to do a impromptu, sort of, since I am planning it. But if you are doing the journaling challenge, May 1st, I will put the, um, get on the email list because that's the only way you'll get the Zoom link. But we're, go I'm going to coach you. We will go through and let's discuss this and let's see some of these blocks that you're having. Because I know that some, some of you have expressed that, okay, this was really hard for me. Well, then let's talk about that. Let me help you break that boundary, break that, break that bound, that block, break that block. And let's get it out. So that way you have the freedom to really explore some of these questions. Also, I have a group coming up. We are starting the first week of May. I would love to see you in there. If this, if today's episode ignites something in you and you're like, heck yeah, I had dreams and, I, and I've been feeling numb to myself and I wanna know who I am for the good of the people around me. So I know, so because I have these dreams and desires that I don't know what to do with and I don't really, I haven't defined them recently. Like connect with me because this is what I love to do and let's talk. Let's talk about what's possible. With that friend, choose joy until joy chooses you. Bye for now.